Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today we're going to learn how to change our photos into Lego mosaics. So a couple of assumptions I need to get out of the way right off the bat. Number one, I am using Photoshop CC 2017. So if you're using an earlier uh, version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. Second, I am using Windows. So if you're using a Mac, when I say hit the control key on the keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started by creating the Lego brick itself that will form the pattern that we use for this effect. Okay, and the way that we do that is we hit control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And we're gonna name this Lego brick. Okay, and the width that we're looking for is 50, height of 50 pixels, resolution 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, and the background contents need to be uh, neutral gray. So click on the little uh, color icon there and then put in 808080 for neutral gray. Color profile that I'm using is Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels. Hit create and we're ready to begin. Let's zoom in a little bit so that we can see what we're doing. So I'm zooming in pretty much, uh, pretty big. All right, uh, and then what we wanna do is we wanna make uh, some center lines here. We wanna find the center of this image. So we're gonna uh, show our rulers and you can do that by hitting R on the keyboard. Oh, wrong, uh, Control R on the keyboard. Uh, and that will show or hide your rulers or you can go up here to view and you can go down to rulers and make sure it has the check mark. Okay, once you see your rulers, click on the top one, drag down and you will see the ruler show and when it gets to the center, it will snap in like that. Do the same thing on the left, click and drag to the center, it will snap in and you now have the center of your document. Okay, uh, then what we need to do is we need to give this background layer uh, a layer effect. So let's just double click on it to turn it into just a regular layer. Hit OK, and then let's go down here to our layer effects. Okay, and we're going to start with a bevel and emboss. All right, the bevel and emboss that we're looking for is going to be an inner bevel. It's going to be smooth, depth of 100%. It's going to be up. Uh, the uh, <clears throat> size is going to be 1. The soften is going to be 0. Angle here, remember, use global light, uncheck, we'd never use it, 135 degrees over 30 degree altitude, gloss contour is going to be linear, anti-alias is unchecked, okay, highlight mode is going to be screen, we're going to make it white, which is all Fs, as you can see there, uh, and the opacity that we're using here is going to be only 45. Okay, then shadow mode is going to be multiply, it's going to be black, which is all zeros, and the opacity uh, level that we're using here is only going to be 30. Okay, then we're going to hit OK and we're done with our background layer there. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get our ellipse tool. And you do that by hitting U on the keyboard or shift U until you see a circle, which is your ellipse tool over here on your tools palette. Now, if you just want to go over here, you can click on the tools palette uh, on the rectangle tool or whatever's there, and then just scroll down until you get to the ellipse tool. And then anywhere on the image itself, just click once. Don't drag, just click, and up will pop the create ellipse uh, uh, dialog box. Now, what you want it to be is you want it to be um, uh, 35 by 35 pixels, okay? 35, not 5, 3. Okay, so 35 by 35 from center, it doesn't make a difference. Hit OK and you now have a circle. Now uh, the circle will be whatever color you have as your foreground here. I happen to have black. Whatever your color is, just make sure that you can see it so you can place it properly. Okay, and the way that we do that is we need our move tool, which is right up here on your uh, toolbar, or you can hit V on the keyboard to bring up the move tool. Let's uh, click and drag until you see your guides change color okay and that will mean that you are in the exact center of your image like so okay once you are in the exact center you're done with your guide so you can hit control h on the keyboard to hide them and then all we need to do is give this circle a little bit of uh, layer styles so we're going to go to fill here for this ellipse layer we're going to go to fill and turn that all the way down to zero we don't need to see the fill we just need to see the effects okay and then what we're going to do is give this uh, two layer styles so we're going to go down to our layer styles and we're going to start with bevel and emboss okay and our bevel and emboss for this ellipse layer is going to be an inner bevel it's going to be smooth it's going to be 100 it's going to be up size here is going to be two like so, and the soften is going to be one, 
like so. Use global light is unchecked for the angle. It's 135. Altitude is 30. Gloss contour is linear. That's anti-alias is off. Highlight mode is going to be screen. It's still white, so that's all Fs. And the opacity that we're using here is going to be at 80. And shadow mode is multiply. It's black, which is all zeros. And we're going to make this also 80. All right, the drop shadow that we're going to be using is going to be a blend mode of multiply. It's going to be black, which is all zeros. The opacity that we're using here is going to be at 55. Angle is going to be 135 degrees. Remember, use global light is unchecked. Our distance is going to be three. Our spread is going to be zero and our size is going to be four. Contour is linear. Anti-alias is going to be unchecked and noise is zero. That's all that we need for our ellipse and it's already beginning to look like a piece of Lego, but it's missing the Lego logo, which is always in the center of the circles of the pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use just the initials of this channel, PMT, and we're gonna put them in there, but feel free to use anything for yourself. Now I'm gonna use my text tool to do this, that's T on the keyboard, or you can go over here to the text tool. I'm using Arial, and uh, it's gonna be narrow, bold, and italic at seven points, sharp, centered. I'm gonna make it black, but again, we're gonna just type it. Uh, we're making it black just so we can see it, then we're gonna get rid of the fill. Uh, and I'm also using, if you go to your character, uh, palette. If you don't see it, just go to window and go to character. Uh, on my character palette here, I am uh, also making the kerning at 25. I found that that works pretty well for the letters that I'm using. So I'm going to click anywhere in here and I'm going to put in P, M, and T. Okay, that's all that you need. And then you go back to your move tool, which is V on the keyboard, and you just center this uh, somewhere here in the center. Okay, just like so. Then again, we're just going to go to our fill. We're going to turn that down to zero. And then we're going to give the letters uh, a little bit of style. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you want to use more letters, of course, you've got to make the, uh, the text, the font smaller. Uh, and that may affect the um, layer styles that I'm going to show you for the text that I'm using. So if you're following along with me and you're using Arial at seven points, these, uh, the... Uh, layer style that I'm going to show you will work for anything else if you're using a smaller font size or if you're using an actual logo or something you'll have to play with the effects to make it look as good as you want it to look okay so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this also a bevel and emboss so let's go down here to bevel and emboss and we're going to make this uh, inner bevel it's going to be smooth depth of 100 up it's going to be one and zero again like so, uh, 135, 30, use global light is off, linear, screen, white, uh, and we're going to make this 70. So we're going to do 70 and multiply black, and we're also going to make this at 70. Okay, then what we need is another drop shadow here, so we're going to make it multiply. It's black, so that's all zeros. Opacity here is going to be at 30. Like so, we're going to make the angle at 135, use global light is off. Distance here is going to be a 2, and the uh, size down here will be a 2, spread is 0. Uh, contour is going to be linear, anti-alias is unchecked, and noise is 0. Hit OK, and we now have a nice Lego piece. Okay, the last couple of things that we need to do here is we need to merge all these down into one single layer. And the way that you do that is you hit Control, Shift, and the letter E on your keyboard to make one layer. Now, I'm going to undo that because if you want to keep this uh, Lego piece because you want to put in uh, different logos or you might want to use it in the future and put different text or different logos in the center, then I would suggest saving it now. Okay, that way you can always make another uh, look for this using this template. Okay, I don't need to do that because making this is fairly easy and I already have this saved. Uh, so I'm just going to merge this down. So once you have it saved, you can hit Control, Shift, and the letter E, and you now have a single layer, which is your Lego piece. Next, what we need to do is we need to change the size to half of its current size. So we're going to go up here to Image. We're going to go to Image Size, and we're going to make sure that under uh, it's going to say fit to original size, but ignore that. We're going to go down here to width and height. We're going to make sure that this is checked. 
you can uncheck it or check it and that means that they are linked and you just want to make this 25. Don't change anything else. Leave resample as automatic. Resolution should stay at 150 pixels per inch. Once you're done with that, you hit OK and you now have what looks like a big blur. But if you go to control one on the keyboard, you now have a Lego piece. Okay, and yes, it's blurry when you get big, but you can still make out that there is text there. And Lego pieces, uh, it's fine because they'll be very small on your image. It's just to give it a little bit of texture. Once we have that, we now have to define our uh, pattern. So you're going to go up here to edit. We're going to go to um, uh, define pattern, and we're going to make it Lego brick and that's all that we need to do. We're going to hit OK, and we now have our Lego brick in our patterns, and we can throw this away. We don't need it anymore, so we're going to hit the little X here. We're not going to save it. Like I said, if you wanted it saved, you should have saved it before, or you can just go back in your history and uh, save it. Now that it's gone, and we can close out that, we can now begin with actually turning a photo into a Lego mosaic. And the way that we do that is we're going to hit control N on the keyboard to bring up our new image dialog box. And we're going to name uh, our image as, um, let's go Lego photo, because that's what we're doing. Now the width and height, the only important part about the width and height is it needs to be divisible by 25. Okay, the width and the height need to be divisible by 25. Now I'm using 2500 by 1400 because um, that is close to a widescreen image or an image that you would get from a modern camera. Okay, now if you want a square image, you can go 2500 by 2500 or 1000 by 1000. Whatever you think would fit best for your image, try and create a new image. Uh, whatever you think will look best for your photo, uh, try to create a new image in roughly that size. Okay, so I'm using 2500 by 1400, resolution of 150 pixels per inch, RGB color 8-bit, background doesn't matter because we're putting a photo in, Adobe RGB 1998 and square pixels, hit create and we're ready to bring in our photo. A word about the photos. You want something that is easily recognizable. So a big crowd or a photo of a forest probably wouldn't work because you have to make all the details would go away because you have to make everything into bricks. Okay, so you want something that's easy, easily identifiable, maybe the Eiffel Tower or, um, or somebody's face or uh, an iconic image uh, or something that you have taken a photo of, maybe a good friend or family member, but make sure that it is a very big, uh, a very close up, close up picture because if they're small in the frame, it's just going to be a blur of pixel of uh, bricks and it won't look like them. Okay, so for this example, I'm going to use an extreme close up of an eagle. Okay, right here is my big eagle. Okay, and I'm going to make that nice and big on the frame uh, so that you get all of the details. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want your photo to be a, um, you want it to be a uh, smart object. Okay, so right click on it and go to uh, convert to smart object and convert that photo to a smart object. Okay, once it's a smart object, you'll see this little smart object icon over there. And um, once it is a smart object, all we have to do is pixelate it into a mosaic. So you're going to go up here to filter, you're going to go down here to pixelate, and then to mosaic. And you're going to put in a cell size of 25, just like your Lego piece. Hit OK, and you now have your um, photo ready to be turned into Lego pieces because it's already broken down into squares. All right, so uh, leave this smart filters open. Don't close it like that. Uh, just leave it open because we are going to need to turn it on and off in a later step. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is create a new layer. So you're going to hit Shift. Control and N on the keyboard to bring up the new layer dialog box. Okay, and we're going to name this as Lego Base because this will be the base layer of our Legos. And we're going to change the mode here all the way down to linear light. Okay, 
Uh, and that's really all that you need to do there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fill this and uh, we're going to fill it with our pattern. Now a quick sh keyboard shortcut for that is Shift and F5, which will bring up the fill dialog box. If you don't want to do that, you can go over here to uh, edit. You can go to whoop, uh, edit and fill. Uh, and that will bring up the same thing. Okay, content, you want it to be pattern. Okay, and then custom pattern. Your pattern will be the very last pattern on the pattern list. You can see that I was working on something before that had the same pattern, but your pattern that you just created will be the last one on this list. So make sure you select that, uh, and then you just wanna leave everything else the same. Script is off, mode is normal, opacity 100%, preserve transparency is unchecked because there is no transparency. Hit OK, and you are now filled with Lego bricks. And that right there could be the end of this, but we're gonna improve this slightly by making it look like the eagle is Legos on top of the base layer of Legos. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this Lego base by hitting Control and J. That will make a duplicate. And on the duplicate, you wanna rename this as Lego Upper or Lego Top or whatever you wanna call it. And then we wanna change it from Linear Light to Overlay because Linear Light is a little bit too harsh. Okay, Lego Base here, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna blur this slightly because it's supposed to be behind the upper Lego blocks. So we're gonna go over here to filter, we're gonna go to blur, and we're gonna go to Gaussian blur. And you wanna make the radius 0 0.5. Okay, it's a slight blur, you barely notice it, but it is important, so you do that. Okay, so if I turn this off, you can see it's slightly blurred and not blurred, blurred and not blurred. Okay, so upper layer, Lego, uh, Lego upper is still showing. Eagle is still here. Okay, now what you need to do is select your main subject. Now there's lots of different ways that you can do this. You can create grids that are 25 pixels by 25 pixels and then you can select with the uh, rectangular marquee. You can select all the pieces that you want. That's a little bit too tedious for me. So I am going to use the uh, quick selection tool. Now here's the thing, you have to be on your uh, photo in order for this to work. If you're on Lego pieces, then it's gonna start selecting those and it won't work. So you wanna be on your eagle layer or uh, if you're using this, oh, I forgot to say that this eagle is, uh, I have a link in the description below, so if you wanted to follow along, you could just download this eagle for free and follow along with what I'm doing. But with, it, with whatever subject that you are using, you wanna select it. Okay, so I'm gonna start selecting this eagle like so. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty easy with the quick selection because everything is color blocks. Okay, so now I have my eagle. And the reason that we have our smart filters, why we turned our photo into a smart object and we're using smart filters to do the mosaic effect is we can turn that off so that we can see if we are selecting stuff that we don't want selected outside of the eagle or if we are getting just basically all of the eagle, which we are. So we're gonna turn the smart filter back on and then what you do is you go up here to Lego Upper uh, with your selection still selected and you just give it a layer mask like so. Now that we have done that, we're gonna give this upper layer, uh, Lego upper layer here, a uh, layer style that will make it look as if these Legos are above the Legos behind, okay? And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna give it a layer style right here and we're gonna start with inner shadow. So go to inner shadow and it's gonna be uh, blend mode of color dodge. The color that we're using is white, which is all Fs. Opacity is gonna be at 85%. Angle is 135, use global light is off. Distance is gonna be one, choke is zero, size is four. Uh, linear is the contour, anti-alias is unchecked, noise is gonna be zero. The next thing that we're gonna do is give it two drop shadows. So your first drop shadow, which is the top one, is going to be a blend mode of multiply. We're going to make it black, which is all zeros. Opacity here is going to be at uh, 60. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 75. Okay, and the angle is going to be at 135. Uh, distance here is going to be at um, distance here is going to be at five. Okay, zero is the spread, and the size here is going to be at four. Okay, a contour here is going to be linear, 
and it's going to be at zero noise. Then you need to hit the plus button here to make a secondary shadow, and that secondary shadow is going to be a blend mode of multiply, black, opacity is 60, angle is 135, use global light is unchecked, of course, distance is 13, uh, spread is zero, size is going to be eight, linear is the contour, anti-alias is unchecked, noise is zero. Okay, then we're going to hit OK, and we now have our Lego block sitting above a base of Legos. So let's try and, um, and cut out the beak. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our uh, uh, photo layer. We're going to do our quick selection, and we're going to select the beak. Okay, so uh, let's get that beak selected like so. Uh, let's get this part over here, uh, this part down here, and let's do this part out over here uh, like so. Now we can get rid of, I think, that, and we can get rid of, I think, that. Like so, uh, let's get rid of that too. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I think I need this over here. Uh, that's a little bit too much. Let's do that. Uh, no, let's get that in there. So there we go. Uh, we need some more of this here, and I think we need that there. Uh, let's turn off our smart filters. That looks like it's most of the beak. So that looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this top upper layer here. Okay, and we'll just name this as beak, like so. So now that we know what that is, and you have to get rid of your, um, you have to get rid of your mask. So just click on the mask and drag down to your trash, and then it will ask you to apply it. Say just delete, don't apply, and you see that it's gone. And now you just hit layer mask, and you've got your beak cut out right there on the eagle's face. Now the last thing that we want to do is we want to go back to our uh, eagle here and we want to give it a little bit more punch and pop. So what we're going to do is we are going to add a hue saturation adjustment layer above our photo layer. So we're going to go over here to our adjustment layers and we're going to do hue saturation. Now this depends of course on the image that you are using. Okay, For this particular image I would say maybe about 20 here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's let's make that about 20 and uh, this somewhere around 10 ish. Let's start with eight. Eight looks good. Yeah. So that gives it a little bit more punch and you can see that when I turn it off and turn it back on. So that gives it a little bit more punch and pop makes everything look a little bit more plasticky. So you want a little hue saturation adjustment layer above your photo layer. Don't put it above your Legos because if you do, uh, it begins to make everything look a little bit weird. You can see it in the shadows. Um, so just keep it down here uh, at the photo layer. So there you have it. You've got uh, a photo turned into a Lego mosaic. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe. I do new tutorials every Tuesday. Once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.